In our dark story today, we tell the tale of a legendary serial killer who was most likely one of the first, so-called, axe murderers. Thirty years after Jack the Ripper stalked the streets of Whitechapel, this cold-blooded killer held an American city hostage to fear, in the same manner. He terrorized, attacked, and murdered numerous people for an entire year, before publicly asking the entire city to listen to jazz music, in order to have their lives spared. It's one of the most gruesome and bizarre true crime cases in all of history. The birthplace of jazz is New Orleans. This is where our dark story takes place. It all began in the year 1918. On May 23rd, in the middle of the night, as Joseph and his wife Catherine lay sleeping in their apartment above their grocery store, a killer cuts the couple's throats with a straight razor. And then bashed their heads in with an axe. Investigators discovered that the killer changed and left his bloody clothes behind before fleeing the scene. They were also able to rule out robbery, once they discovered that money and other valuables were left all alone in plain sight. Several people were questioned but there would be no evidence to keep anyone for long. A little over a month later, another store owner and his mistress, would be the next to be hacked in the middle of the night. The two victims would be discovered the next morning, when no one opened the store. They were both found lying in a pool of blood. The owner would survive this brutal attack, but his mistress died the next day. The most interesting note on this attack was that the press would take more interest in writing about the scandal of this well-known grocer, rather than the crime itself. His mistress would implicate her lover as the attacker, before she died. He would go on to serve time in prison, before eventually being released. The third victim was a 28-year-old pregnant woman. On August 5th, just before midnight, she awoke to find a dark figure, wearing a hat, standing over her holding an axe. He then bashed in her face several times and then cut her scalp back several inches. It would again be a gruesome scene. She survived the attack and gave birth to a healthy baby girl two days later. Investigators would once again find very few clues, and had no suspects. However, they did publicly state, they felt the attacks were all related, and the calling card remained the same. The victims were all Italian-American grocers, and the perpetrator used an axe that he took from their store. These same attacks would continue over the next several months, with many of the victims surviving, but only one real lead would come about. One of the attacks happened with an elderly grocery store owner, who lived with his two nieces. At the time of the attack, the two girls were left unharmed, however they were able to provide a description of the man. They said the attacker was a dark-skinned man, heavy-set, and wore a dark suit, and a slouched hat. Most of the clues collected from the crime scenes were all very similar. Nothing was ever stolen but the rooms were usually ransacked. The killer always used blades and hatchets that he retrieved from the owner's store. The panels from the doors and windows were always chiseled away to gain entry. As the attacks began piling up, a sweeping fear took over the entire city. Reports started coming in, on sightings of people lurking around in backyards and parking lots carrying an axe. Families started carrying shotguns, and taking turns staying up to watch over everyone. This killer became known as the Axe Man of New Orleans. A name that to this day has become famous in the true crime genre. It would be several months before the Axe Man would strike again. This time it happened in the suburbs, right outside the city. The victim, was an Italian immigrant and grocer who lived with his wife and two-year-old daughter. One night, the owner's wife was awakened, to find her husband struggling with a large man, wielding an axe. After knocking the husband out on the floor, the assailant turned to the wife and child. 
Both the husband and wife survived, but the young child was killed. After police completed their investigation, the victim's neighbor and his son, were charged with murder. That accusation would eventually be reversed. However fear began to rise to an all-time high throughout the city. And then, one of the strangest phenomena in true crime history happened. The Axeman wrote a letter to the local newspaper. It started off taunting the police and public on how he can never be caught. He went on with a strange request to the public. This is a sample of what he would write. Now, to be exact, at 12.15 on next Tuesday night, I am going to pass over the city of New Orleans. In my infinite mercy, I am going to make a little proposition to you people. I am very fond of jazz, and I swear by all the devils in the nether regions, every person shall be spared, in whose home, a jazz band is in full swing. That night the music flowed everywhere in the city. Every dance hall was filled to capacity. Hundreds of homes staged parties with live music, and every band in the city, both professional and amateur, played somewhere that night. As promised, no one was harmed. After a few quiet weeks, the Axeman would return once again. Three more victims would fall prey to the axe-wielding maniac. Two additional grocers and a druggist. But after those incidents, mysteriously, the Axeman would disappear for good. This story has been told many times through books, documentaries, TV shows, and movies. So many theories would be explored throughout the years to come. Many say the Axeman was attacking the Italian grocers as some sort of paid assassin by the competition. Others believed he was evoking some sort of retribution on Italian Americans. One thing is for sure, he will remain one of the most famous killers of all time.